Suppose phi from G2K is a group homomorphism. We want to prove that the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G. So the kernel is a subgroup, so we won't prove that. We'll just prove the normality in this problem. So recall that the kernel of phi, it's the set of all of the x's in G, such that phi takes x and sends it to the identity in K. So we have to prove that the kernel is normal in G. So we have to show that for all G and G and for all H and the kernel of phi, that the element GHG inverse is in the kernel of phi. That's what it means for the kernel of phi to be normal in G. So let's kind of keep going with this and it kind of gives you insight in how to do the proof. So GHG inverse being in the kernel of phi, well if x is in the kernel of phi that means phi of x is the identity in K. So GHG inverse being in the kernel of phi means that phi of GHG inverse is equal to the identity element in K. So it makes sense to start the proof by looking at this. So if we show this, we're basically done. So for all G and G, for all H and the kernel of phi, let's look at phi of GHG inverse. Well, phi is a group homomorphism, so this can be written as phi of G phi of h, phi of g inverse. This is equal to phi of g. h is in the kernel of phi. So phi takes h to the identity element in k. And here we still have the phi of g inverse. Phi of g times the identity in k is just phi of g because it's the, you know, this is the identity. So here we have phi of g inverse, and this is just the identity in k. So we showed that phi of ghg inverse is equal to the identity in k. That's precisely what it means for ghg inverse to be in the kernel of phi. And that's the proof. We've shown that the kernel of phi is normal in g.